welcome back to my channel. So today I have something very exciting, at least for me. I finished reading a book. <laughs> Which, I mean, I do a lot of reading and stuff, but I finished an actual physical book. Lately, all of my books have been audiobooks that I've been finishing, and I haven't, like, finished reading, reading a book. So I was very excited to finish this one. Obviously, it's it's very, very short, so it's not necessarily that huge of an accomplishment, but to have been in, like, this reading slump where I haven't been doing much reading and to finally finish reading a book, even when that's only barely 100 pages, was very satisfying for me. Um, so this book is A Short Stay in Hell by Stephen L. Peck. Um, it's based, I guess, in part on a, uh, another short story by, it's like Jorge uh, Burgess or something like that. I forget his name. I probably should have looked it up. But anyways, um, and that story's called The Library of Babylon. So basically the concept of this, and I think also that short story, I haven't read that one, is that hell is like this huge library that contains every book that could ever possibly have been written within a set number of parameters within this, which maybe also comes from the short story. The parameters are 400 some odd pages with so many lines of on each page and so many characters on each page. And so the whole conceit of the story is that the character that is in it gets sent to this hell and he has to find the book of his life that's written in this library. Um, it, written without mistakes and that sort of thing, which is possible because in this hell he can remember every detail exactly of his life. So he's just sent wandering the stacks. And it was a fascinating read, to say the least. Um, so clearly, uh, this hell version that's in this is not based on, like, a Christian-style hell. Um, they talk about the specific religion it's from. Let me see if I can find it real fast, because I have a lot of trouble pronouncing it. Um, yeah, let's see. Uh, so it's based on the religion... Zoroastrianism, which is a Middle Eastern religion. Um, I'm not actually familiar with it, but it's apparently a real religion. Um, so it's based on that. So the character in our book was actually a Mormon, which was a fun touch for me personally being a Mormon. Um, and it raises some interesting questions because he was like a Mormon in his life and we have beliefs about the afterlife and eternity and what happens to our souls and things like that, that this basically completely contradicts. And then it's like, you don't have your spouse anymore in this hell. You don't have any, like, real relationships and that kind of thing. So he ends up going against, like, the morality of his Mormonism eventually. And he'll just, like, sleep around sometimes and things. And so it was kind of a fascinating look of if, like, you died and your religion turned out not to be true... Would you still follow the beliefs of your religion, or would you give up on it? I mean, to some degree, at least where I'm at right now, if that were to happen to me, I feel like I would take it as, well, at least these tenets of my religion are familiar to me, so I'd kind of want that for the familiarity, even if it's not technically true. And, I, I mean, at least where I'm at right now, things like morality are so ingrained in me that I don't know that I could give them up. But on the other hand, I've not been stuck in a hellish library for a billion, billion years looking for a book that technically should be possible to find. There's, like, math to prove that it's a finite number of books, um, but it would take you years and years and billions and billions of years to actually find this book. And so, it's, like, a fascinating thought. And um, the writer, Stephen L. Peck, um, he's actually apparently um, Mormon too, so it was kind of just an interesting thought experiment in what I already talked about with it, but also with the LDS religion, we believe that people who die without it, um, they go to a place called Spirit Prison and then get to be taught by members of the church basically about the church and they can choose to accept it or not once they're in the afterlife as well, so it kind of had 
that sense of it for me too, reading this. I was kind of like, oh, this is a little bit like the mindset that we talk about for those people in spirit prison that we believe that we'll be teaching and stuff. And it's like we're asking them to kind of put aside the things that they believed in life to accept our religion. And so it was just like a fascinating perspective shift of, well, personally right now, I don't think that I would change my religion because of familiarity and things like that. But at the same time, that's exactly what the Mormon church is saying that we ask of people in the spirit world. So it was like a paradigm shift too and stuff. And so it's like if you see this reality that you didn't know about and it is so obviously true, do you just go with that reality? And it was fascinating. I loved it. This was great for like 100 pages. What a little thought process to be going through and stuff. So I highly recommend it um, just for the philosophy of it, if nothing else. But it was well written and stuff too. And I really enjoyed it. And you really get the sense of that eternity that he's having to wander through and that it's just going on and on and yeah so it, it gave you even in just a hundred pages that sense that he'd been wandering for eternity and would basically be wandering for eternity until he found his book too and just fascinating stuff so uh, yeah, that's all I've got for now. I just wanted to talk a little bit about this book and some of that philosophical stuff that I found so interesting in it and how it kind of shifted some of my own thought processes and stuff too, so, and how it related to my own thought processes. So it was a great little short read. Again, since it's just 100 pages, it's a really fast, easy read to get through. Um, but yeah, I think that's all I have to say about this for now. So this is the Umla Harper signing out.